Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day today, and if not, maybe my smiling face will help. <laughs> anyway, I did not realize that it has already been a month since the last video I've done, and that makes me feel kind of like crap, because I wanted to commit to making video content every single week, and I completely failed. So I need to really, really prioritize this. I think one of the problems I'm facing myself is you know, you spend all this time creating content and then you don't get very many comments or interaction. And that's just part of it. When you're a small channel like this one right now, you know, I came, my original channel was like almost 21,000 people. So I could do like anything and I would get comments on this one. There's only like a hundred people right now. That's when I'm recording this. And so you only get so many, that's not a jab at anybody in particular. It's more of just my own insecurities as a content creator. And I need to push past that and just start making content and then the people will enjoy it and then it grows right so it's all on me um i've been super busy with my freelance job um if some of you don't know i do video work um, on the side as i'm trying to grow this author business and um i've been super super busy with that and it, which is good because it's been a huge increase in the amount of jobs that i've had but that means all of the extra projects i've been doing I can't do them at the same speed. So I've had to sort of change gears a little bit and that's been a balancing act with my family and with everything else going on. With that said, when the summer hits, it'll probably slow down some anyway. That's just usually how it is in the business. Um, so that gives me a lot more time to do all kinds of other stuff. In Since last, since February, that was when I posted the last video, I've actually published two new books. Yeah, two, I'm crazy. Uh, I did Reign of Fire, which is the second book in the Kingdom of Sand series. Um, then I also did How to Write 2,000 Words a Day. Uh, so I published those two books. I also am currently editing book three in the Kingdom of Sand series, which is why I have this new illustration behind me. So that book is coming out hopefully in the next couple of days. It'll be processed through Amazon to get that up. I'm doing some final tweaks on the editing um, where I run it through Grammarly to kind of check some stuff that I've missed when I do my read through, um, do some other finalizing with format and stuff. And then it's basically ready to go already. It's pretty close. It's about like at 95% finished. Um, just because of the amount of time it takes to finish it through Grammarly and everything. Uh, so it'll be really, really soon. So I wanted to go over this new illustration. This is by the same artist that's been helping me with book one and book two in the series. So it's really cool. In my opinion, it's kick-ass. Uh, so this is going to be the first time that we've actually seen the Arbalist. This is a mech I've had designed for in concept for a while now, but I haven't used it on any of the book covers because it wasn't in any of the stories really. I mean, it was in some of the, the novels, but it was kind of like as like a background mech. It wasn't really like in a fight. So this time it's actually going to be in a fight scene. If you don't know, each of my illustrations are in the book. Um, I, I can't stand it um, when you would... I used to be a big fan, well, still am, a big fan of Battletech, for example. And they used to have artwork that um, was really cool. So, like, as, like, a teenager and young adult, you look at it, you're like, wow, that's really cool. And then you read the book, and you're like, I don't remember ever seeing that scene in there. So, these scenes actually are specifically in the book. Um, you know, the scene could happen really quick or whatever, but it actually is... There is a moment in the book where if you were watching, like if it was a movie, you would see this exact piece of art, right, kind of thing. So in this scene, um, we have three of the pirate mechs. You'll notice the theme of the mechs has continued through the whole series so far. So this, every time you see these mechs, these are mechs that are part of Gold Team. Um, and depending on the novel, there's different size teams and stuff, but Gold Team has pretty much been through the whole series um, in different in different portions they they weren't really in this one that much and now they're becoming more prominent as things keep going so in this scene you've got three different mechs they're attacking some invaders that are that are on the way i don't want to spoil too much but they're all shooting upwards because there's a huge uh army that's that's invading and they're trying to defend the base so you've got the spade right here uh this is a very heavy style war mech uh very it, it's made for close range for the most part but it's made to destroy other enemy mechs you've got the sierra uh which is more of the all-around grunt unit 
and then you have the Arbalest. Now the Arbalest has not been on any of the other covers like I was saying, but it is it packs a ton of firepower. For example, these missile pods on the arms, they launch missiles that are made by, I think it's Zephyr Ballistics, and basically Zephyr uh, products are just highly destructive. And for example, the missiles that they shoot, I think they're Zephyr Strike missiles, they are made to do one thing, and that is to just destroy armored units, but from severe ranges. Um, so typically what you'll have is when you have an Arbalest, it'll be equipped with two drones that attach to its back and the remote controlled drones that would, that you can, the pilot can launch them off and you can give them like commands and they'll go out and throughout the battlefield. And their whole job is to tag enemy units with a laser, attack laser. And basically what that does is it just, you know, marks the unit. So that way when the Arbalest is say behind cover, it can shoot the missiles up. Then they have uh, micro jets on the missiles that will help redirect them, and then they just shoot at the enemy. So it is a really fantastic weapons platform that can shoot indirectly. It does not have to have line of sight, unlike the other war mechs, and most of the war mechs actually in Revelations require line of sight to some extent. The Arbalest was built in order to be able to do that without having to have direct line of sight. So it is, uh, when you're looking at it in terms of, you know, because I'm a, a big uh, tabletop war gamer, so... Uh, a lot of these terms might come from that as well. So when you're, you know, when you're moving your pieces and stuff, most of the time in games, you have to have direct line of sight to an enemy, which is like when you're shooting a rifle in real life, you have to be able to see the target. You can't just shoot, right? And just hope you hit. You have to be able to see. Arbalus is made to be able to, to go around that. Um, besides the, the missiles here in the arms, it comes with a beam cannon weapon here in the center torso, which it also has another dual barrel beam cannon on its back. The Arbalest is really slow. Um, it's decently armored in the torso and legs, but the arms are very weak to enemy attacks. That's why they come equipped with like these little mini shields here on the sides. But it doesn't take much to destroy one of their missiles. Another reason, we'll, another reason why they shoot indirectly. Uh, and then in case any other unit, <clears throat> say another enemy Warmack just charges at it, just trying to close the, the range in order for its missiles to be less effective, it comes equipped with these two blitz pods. And blitz pods are nasty. What they do is if you shoot them, they basically fire everything they have at one target, like all at once. And the whole point is to just shred the enemy just to pieces. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Normally your Arbalest would not be um, on its own. It's going to be assisted by other units. So you would have either Sierras, or you would have Hunters, maybe an enforcer, you'd have different war mechs or vehicles or infantry on the ground in order to help, it may be even uh, air cover, to help protect the Arbalest because its job is to, you know, sort of act like a mini artillery piece um, where it can shoot indirectly, but it's mobile. So it can get around difficult terrain. It's equipped with some pretty nasty weapons. So I'm really excited. This right here is going to be the book cover. Like I said, this will probably be like about and this section here will be the front, and then you got the back on this side, and then it has a little bit extra because that way it, it, it fits. Um, but I'm really excited. The characters throughout this series are getting more defined. Mikhail Tarvis, which when we were introduced to him as the captain of The Only Hope in the first book, and then to see his transition to his role in book three is going to be... He, he's growing as a person. In my view, now I'm the author, so I'm going to be more excited, right? But he is changing. He's going through these very difficult opportunities for growth in power, growth in authority, growth in influence. But in order to get to those points, he has to cross through some pretty dark things at times. And it's interesting how he is dealing with those situations, those that he has that he trusts, those that he has that are trying to influence his decisions in a certain direction. And, you know, it's it's a really awesome series to be introduced to the Revelations universe. You know, I have like Rise of the Inquisitor is a standalone novel which deals with uh, Inquisitor Damian Varius. Um, that is a fantastic novel. It shows a little bit of what's going on in the background of Revelations, uh, which when you start to dig into Revelations, the whole point of the series is to show how kind of metaphorically how in, in the real world, we watch the news, we hear, we watch YouTube videos, we do whatever we have to, to like learn about what's going on in the real world, but we only see through a certain filter, right? 
the people that are making the real decisions, the real backroom deals, the real power players in our world sometimes aren't even visibly able to be seen. We don't know the names of some of them. We don't know what they're capable of. We don't know their connections. We don't know who's really allies and who's really enemies, you know, and we've got all these things going on with Russia and China and, and, and the Middle East and then Europe and all these things. And sometimes we don't really know as an ordinary citizen, we don't really know who's friend and foe. We're told these guys are bad guys. We're against these guys. These guys are our friends. But sometimes you're like, they seem kind of like the same people. Right. And it sort of just depends on perspective. So if you're in the United States, you have certain enemies. If you're in other countries around the world, you have different allies and, and enemies of your country. So I'm trying to sort of show that in revelations like this sci fi can be something you just turn your brain off and just enjoy. Or you can dig a little bit deeper and you can enjoy a universe that has depth. So it has elements of it that are are a big deal and show how things really work in revelations what's going on on different levels of government different levels of influence different levels of power and agendas and stuff so i'm um, we dug a little bit into that with rise of the inquisitor it echoed a little bit of what's going on but really kingdom of sand is really being able to start peeling back different layers that start showing um things to do with different people in government the way that there's certain backroom deals going on and i'm really excited with this series overall because it's 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 really getting a chance to really start being its own and i can't wait to get some feedback on book three because book three really starts challenging um and i want people to start seeing how mikhail is changing and whether or not you view that as good or bad or you're indifferent to it he is going through change he's not the same person that we were introduced here to what we will be in book three so overall i'm really excited there's a lot of stuff happening. I'm going to make a couple other videos to try to touch on some other subjects that I've been thinking about. Um, if you have any other ideas for videos or things that you would like to see covered, or if you have other questions, please leave those down below and we'll be able to get some other stuff going. All right, guys. See you guys.